Yeah, I wanted to uh, show you this site that uh, SMA, who makes the Sunny Boy, the very popular Sunny Boy grid tie inverter, uh, has uh, for their customers. It's called the Sunny Portal, and you can find it at Sunny Portal, Sunny Portal. Dot com and their customers uh, they're able to monitor their systems uh, remotely to see how their performance is on a daily basis and then get all the history and uh, although most of the sites are uh, private there is a, you can opt to have your site publicly listed so if you go to the publicly available power plants link here that I'm clicking on it'll uh, bring up a list of all the public available plants and uh, they have uh, you know thousands of them of them around the world if you scroll down on this list here to your country I'll select the United States it looks like they have 1785 uh, installations currently on their publicly available plants list in the United States and I'll hit search <coughs> so that'll bring up only the sites within the United States and then you have an option to either search on a particular zip code or uh, city or you can just click on what I did which was the quickest which was click on the zip code and that'll put the, all of them in alphabetical order. And then if you go down to your general zip code range, you'll be able to find some that are pretty reasonably close to your house and, um, and therefore close to your latitude. So I go down here, and here's some of them for Minnesota. Here's some Minneapolis and Egan. Lane, Duluth, those are all within my state. The one residential one that's good is called Egan. That's only about literally about eight miles from my house. You can see that they have a five kilowatt system. So I'll click on that and that brings up that owner's uh, details about their particular uh, plant profile. So today is the uh, 26th of October 2010 they had their system commissioned about a year ago and uh, as I said it's a 5.1 kilowatt system they predicted when they installed it they they would get an annual production of about 6223 kilowatt hours in the year and their system is uh, comprised of 24 215 watt uh, panels and uh, one Sunny Boy 6000 grid tie inverter. Their house is actually is 278 square meters, which is about 3,000 square feet. It's a two story, five bedroom, and uh, it's actually an electrically heated home. And their roof angle is at 225 which is south southwest and as I was talking the other day on one of my prior videos my house is at 205 and the tilt of their roof that they have it mounted on as you can see in the picture here is at 34 degrees where our latitude here is about 45 and actually they recommend that you if you have a fixed tilt that you put it about eight degrees in this area lower than the latitude so ideally it would be at uh, 37 degrees so they're saying tilt is optimal for this azimuth which is uh, pretty close so anyway so there's the basic information <clears throat> then you can go to the uh, plant overview and it'll tell you what's going on currently for production and uh, this is kind of the accumulative amount of production they have gotten since they uh, were covering you know basically for the last 12 months and since they installed it 
uh, the very beginning of November last year, they have accumulated over, looks like about 6,600 kilowatt hours, which is higher than was estimated by just a little bit. I think it was 6,200 some. So they're they're at least getting pretty close this past year with what was estimated, which is quite good. And then you can see what the daily amount is. Now it's been cloudy and raining here the last two days. But you can see the panels are still putting out some power more in the uh, 500 watt range, which is what about 10% of what the system is capable of. But like I say, it's it's actually pouring rain at this very moment and so uh, you wouldn't really expect a whole lot. If you go to the generate generation overview tab it'll bring you up a bigger history um, for either the day cumulative, cumulative for the day in uh, kilowatts, uh, the spot measurement, and then this is the uh, how many kilowatt hours into the meter for each of the last few uh, months worth of days so you can see the average with sunnier days and some days with some clouds and then like right now we've, we're in a real uh, dreary patch of, of weather so it drops off pretty significantly but you can see it's averaging around 25 kilowatt hours per day on the better days and then over the course of the year you can see and this somewhat tracks where we have the most available sunshine as I was mentioning in my one of my prior videos on tilt angle of how we um, we get some very long days in June July over 16 hours of sunlight so this particular person was able to generate a peak of 800 kilowatt hours in uh, August a little less than that in July but pretty strong through these seven months here but clearly through the winter where we have sh days that are less than eight hours of sun in December and January is where we really take a hit on our solar production. So anyway, I thought this was pretty interesting and um, what you can do is go back and do a search for your area. Now it turns out that not every one of the installations has all of this historical data some of the sites only let you get at the current day's amount so you might have to search around for ones that are have a more complete set of data just like this particular person has and that'll give you an idea of how much a particular installation of a particular size in your area how much it will really generate as far as grid tied power back uh, into your home and um, you can then have a you know good idea what's really possible because these are actual collected numbers. Anyway, I thought it was pretty interesting. Have fun. Another thing you can do is uh, take the example that you found for your area and get a rough idea of you know what percent of the installed power rating for the system which is basically you know the what they call the nameplate rating for the panels uh, and compare that to how much real power actually got produced uh, to the grid so if I take the example that I went over here with the system size was 5.1 kilowatts and I multiply it by the sun hours per day in our area which was 4.53 now that's a number that if you just go out to Google and type in sun hours per day you'll find one or more site that has a list of major cities and it'll have a number that's been pre-calculated for over the course of the year how many sun hours per day that area would have and it varies quite a bit uh, but in our case it's 4.53 on average and then uh, obviously there's 365 days per year multiply those three numbers together it tells us that theoretically if we can get every watt of power out of those panels we should be able to generate 8432 kilowatt hours in the course of a year well obviously nobody gets the hundred percent of their panel power out there's losses due to um, 
shading, due to dirt, due to wiring, due to the grid tie inverters, doesn't have 100% efficiency. But if you look on the particular uh, example that you were using, they tell you how many actual measured kilowatt hours were produced. In the case of my example, 6,588. So that turns out to be 78% of the theoretical maximum. So that 78% is probably real close to a good rule of thumb number for a lot of the systems that you'll see installed. So if you're putting together a system yourself, you can kind of estimate, well, how much am I really going to be able to produce? And just assume it's going to be probably in that 78% range, given a plus or minus a few percent, assuming you're, uh, you know, s similar kind of a arrangement, I mean, optimum tilt angle, optimum orientation, and so forth. Then what you could do is you could say, okay, now that I know how many kilowatt hours this system can produce, I'll multiply it by my kilowatt hours cost and like in my area it's about 12 cents per kilowatt hour tells me that that system will save $790 per year. I say alright well how much would a system, a 5 kilowatt system cost to be installed? <coughs> well then you just enter, have another calculation, the cost per watt of the system. Uh, and as you most people know if you've been doing some shopping around for panels you can generally buy the raw panels for between two and three dollars per watt and then but then if you add in the grid tie inverter which are tend to be rather expensive the wiring the racking the combiner box the shutoff box some breakers some monitoring equipment you're going to be up in that five to six dollars per watt as the installed cost so if I add five dollars per watt times 5,100 watts, the installed cost was $25,500. And assuming there's no rebates or tax credits or things that come off of that, the basic system itself, given this uh, level of uh, cost, currently has a 32-year payback period. So you either have to be patient and assume that, you know, that number is going to come down because the cost of electricity is going to be going up and um, you should be able to take advantage of some rebates uh, you know there's more that goes into that equation than just this raw number because on the surface this uh, 32 years is beyond the normal service life of the system anyway and would have to be probably replaced before then anyway but anyway you can just tell by having a few data points of systems in your area, you should be able to quickly deduce some of the uh, factors associated with it and see how it applies in your, your case.